Are we ever really satisfied? That is a good question. Good morning, you guys. Welcome back to the channel. It is Saturday and it's a beautiful Saturday morning here in Memphis and I'm here today with another video. Hope you guys are having an amazing morning. My morning started out pretty lazy and I'm just kind of now moving about, gonna get out a little bit and try to enjoy some of this beautiful sunshine. It's like when I looked out this morning, it was just a different glow. You can tell when it's getting near to the seasons changing because the sunlight seems to look a little different inside your home. I don't know if you guys notice that or not. And when you look out, it's just a little brighter. So I know that spring is on the horizon. I got to turn off my phone, so let me do that now. But guys, I'm here today with another video. I hope you guys are just being happy and satisfied with life right now. And this actually is gonna be why I wanted to do this video today about being satisfied. Are we ever really satisfied? Or are we, or are we always wanting more? Are we always wanting more in life? And in light of a lot of things that has been going on in the world today, um, with our government, um, with tragedies and um, everything that's happening around the world with sicknesses, illness, with this virus, coronavirus, and um, just uh, weather, you know, these unseasonably things that are happening in areas that hasn't happened. It just made me think about life and what's valuable, what's important. Are we ever really satisfied? And when I got to analyzing and thinking about my life, which I'm going to always use me as an example because I know for sure about me. I can't really tell you about you or anybody else in life, but I can talk about me. I know me. So when I think about my life and I think about everything that I've done over the years um, with trying to survive and just getting to that area of life to be comfortable and happy, I think about that a lot. I think about, have I ever really been satisfied? Am I always wanting more? And it makes me think about just things that I have done with my life. And I actually am inspired by a video that I watched this morning um, from Sister Cousins. And it actually ties into this. You know, are we prepared for our lives and, and tragedies and things that happen when we're least expecting it in life? Are we satisfied? Are we always just doing things that will make our lives harder? Are we prepared for those um, situations that come unexpectedly. And with me, and I have been talking about this for some time on my channel, um, being in my, in my middle 50s and preparing for retirement early because I want to actually focus on the things that are more important to me in life and be able to experience some things in life that, that bring me happiness and joy. It's important for me to do that before I get to an age where I can't or um, my focus has to be on other things like my health or um, just being on a fixed income where you can't um, be able to do things that you might want to experience before, you know, life changes and you can't. And with that thought process, I was thinking about how we are not satisfied with where we are every time we do things with our lives it seems like once you reach a certain plateau of life or you achieve a certain accomplishment you're always looking for the next one is there ever an area where you get to that point where you're saying I'm there and I'm happy with my life where I'm at and I'm not trying to outdo that or trying to look at other people and trying to achieve what they have you know I think that our culture and our environment has 
mentally put us in a state of mind where we feel that we have to always be looking for the next best, best, best thing. We're never okay with where we are. And that made me look at my life because I know growing up as a child, my life started out pretty good when we lived with my father. My, my father was a very successful black man. And I had the privilege of, and I'm gonna say privilege, of being able to live with him for probably eight years of my life because my mother divorced him when I was around eight years old. And then that's when my life changed. It changed because being a child in the 60s, a young, say a baby, you know, and a young child in the 60s, for a black man to be successful, for my father to be young and own his own home in a predominantly white neighborhood, and to go from that to, you know, having to rely on the government for certain things because my mother left and, and she wasn't as successful financially as my father, and to see all of that change. So at that age when you're young, you're impressionable. So you start seeing things around you and you start wanting things around you. So you grow up feeling like I need these things in order for my life to look a certain way. And so growing up through that and then my mother did remarry at some point and things became a little bit easier, but we still, you know, want more when we're young. That's what culture and environment will do for you. It'll make you feel like you have to continue, that you want to have better things, especially when you're looking at your friends and family members who may be a little bit more successful from a monetary standpoint or a materialistic standpoint. We're always looking to have more. So when I was young, that's what I was doing. I was like, I can't wait till I get 18 so I can get grown and I can have this and I can have that and I can do these different things with my life. You know, that's just what happens as you grow. So looking back, I think that those impressions in my mind made me, it molded me into that drive of working hard and, and having being able to get to that point where I can be able to afford certain things. Because I can't say, I can't sit here and say a lot of my debt was because of circumstances with raising children. A lot of it was, but a lot of it was my own wants and desires to go out and have things. So I purchased things, you know, you want to, you know, have certain things. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that, because if you work hard with your life, you educate yourself, or even if you just go out and get a job, um, you are working to be able to afford the things that you want in life and the things that you need in life. So it's nothing wrong with wanting nice things. But sometimes we can want things in excess and living above our means. And I think at some point in life, most people touch on that area of life where they start to, to get things that they really don't need and maybe don't, you know, that's going to put them in an area where they might have to buckle down a little bit more, work some overtime to be able to afford that. And that's when we start stepping into the area of life where we're just not satisfied with where we have become and we start wanting more and more and more and more. And it just made me think about my life. And so that's why I decided to change a few things with my life now because I want to retire early and be able to live that life and, um, experience those things that I want to experience, which involves a lot of travel because I would love to see a lot of the world. You know, I've had the privilege to go out of the country, but there are a lot of places that I really want to go. And um, I'm planning on going to Africa uh, at the end of the year, going into the new year. I want to actually have that as my birthday celebration for 2021. And um I'm believing that it's going to end up being a solo trip. So my focus now is to attach myself with a travel group so that I can be able to go and experience that. Because I don't think I really want to do that first trip alone. So um, I have to make sure my funds are at that point where I can be able to afford it. Because I was going to do it more with a friend and experience it more on a... Um, 
just the two of us and we was gonna just go by TripAdvisor and different things like that. But now I think I need to do it with a group if I'm gonna do it on a solo trip so that I won't be doing this experience by myself. So that is my goal and and I wanna just live life and enjoy my family and my grandchildren and, and, and just live and enjoy life, experiencing my hobbies and being at peace. Not worry about paying our bills, the debt, you know, things like that. So that's why it was important for me to, to take these two years to focus on getting my finances in order and curving that appetite to run out and purchase things. So now when I do, I'm more aware of the cost of things. I don't mind thrifting. I don't mind buying things on a budget. And if it's something I absolutely just don't need, I'm not going to purchase it. And I'm saying all this not to tell people that that is the way your life should be, but to get you to think about where you are in your life and to learn about being satisfied with your life. If you have gotten to a point of your life where you can actually just breathe, to focus on that and to focus on what it is that really brings happiness to your life because we do know that material things come and go. That beautiful home that you have, that beautiful car that you may have purchased and working hard and over time to be able to afford to have it could be gone in an instance. When I purchased my home some 15 years ago, 15, maybe almost 20 years ago, I never thought that I would not be living in that home. I never thought that it would come to a point where that house would not be mine anymore. But due to divorce and different things like that, your life can change. So when you're making purchases, focus on the long-term goal of that. You know, if it's something you're going to want, is it going to be an investment even if you don't keep it? If it's, is it going to be an investment that you can continue to have a return on, you know, like renting it out or selling it at some point. When you're talking about the finances, your, your, your automobile, is it because you actually love that automobile or is it because it appears to be a certain status for you in society? And those are things that are important. Now, when I was married, I had very nice cars. You know, we, we did what we did, you know, that's what, but now I was like being single, being more economical <laughs> and I was able to pay my car off and it's been paid off now almost three years now and um, for it to be very, you know, in very good condition, very low miles. People are always trying to purchase it from me because it's very low miles and that's because of due to where I live and not having to drive it. I drive my car basically on the weekends. So five days a week is sitting in my, in my garage. So you think about that, uh, it's gonna have a lot of low mileage and so it's in really, really, really good condition. So I'm planning on keeping that, that car forever <laughs> or until it just actually gives out on its own because what's the importance of it to me? And I'm not saying this has to be your goal, but for me, it's more important for it to do and serve the purpose of what I purchased it for is to get me to the places I need to go. If I need to get around town, I can do that. Even if I need to travel and drive it, it can do that. So it wasn't so much about what it looked like per se. Of course, I like the vehicle that I purchased, but it wasn't about status or having the next best thing, but to serve the purpose. And I'm comfortable with that. I'm happy with that. So are we really satisfied or are we always looking to upgrade and to have more and more and more? And I'm just asking you, especially those who may be a lot younger than I am, to evaluate your life now so that when you get here, you might not have to focus on the things like I'm focusing on to make sure your life is good. And I want to thank Sandy for that video because I was like, wow, you know, our minds are thinking the same because I had planned this video talking about are you satisfied with your life? And then I watched her video this morning and I'm like, that tied all in together. So I just want to ask you guys to just think about where you are in your life, what it is that truly brings you joy and happiness, and to focus on those things. You know, focus on where you want to be in five and ten years, what you want to be doing with your life. Is it going to be very costly for you to be able to have those things or to be able to live? Now, we do know 
It's a lot of people are not able to be here. A lot of people are having to work hard, two jobs, maybe three jobs to get to where they want to be in life. And I understand that. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. But if you can start thinking about what you need to eliminate to make your life easier, I would say focus on those things. If it's something that you absolutely don't have to have, focus on that. Focus on in, uh, investing your money in areas of your life that can make it easier for you to be able to get through life. Because sometimes, you know, we don't need what we think we need. I know people <laughs> who struggle with paying their everyday bills, but will call me and ask me for money to afford to go to some show or to take a trip or to get the hair done. So what is the priority? What's more important? And sometimes it's, we don't think like that, but we do have to evaluate those circumstances, those situations, and do act accordingly so that we'll be able to have a better life as we get older. And as my culture, because we were deprived of a lot of things, my race, I think sometimes our minds have been programmed that we have to have certain things, certain statuses in life to feel like we have become successful. And oftentimes when you look at a true rich person, they are not always driving or dressing in the latest trends. So think about that sometimes. And um, evaluate your life, that's all I'm saying. This video is more for just to get you to think about where you are in life and where you want to be in a few years so that you can truly say I'm satisfied with my life and where I am. So hope this video was helpful in the sense that it just generate thought for you and get you to thinking because I pray that I have another 10, 20 years <laughs> to live and I wanted to be doing the things that I truly feel would make me happy in life. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you guys will have a wonderful Saturday. May it bring you all the happiness and joy you want today. And I will see you guys later. Maybe Monday, but update on the video. I think I'm going to bring my live stream around 7 or 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. So I will definitely put something in the community page probably on Monday. So be looking for that to know exactly what time. So thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, hit the thumbs up, share the video, leave a comment. I love the dialogue and communicating with you guys. So until next time, I wish you guys peace and love, and I'll see you real soon. Bye.